have the, like I say, we have people say, don't you have anything to do the 550 car? Yeah, well, actually we do a lot. Uh, it's just that the 197s and the Cobras uh, seem to be a really strong part of our business, especially on the, the IRS cars, because we're the only ones that really understand and support IRS. But I thought we'd uh, we put together uh, s uh, some little things on a uh, little, little presentation on the 550s. Along with, uh, I got a list of everything we did. We're going to use uh, uh, Maryland as our example. That's the, uh, the CSR that we built, the 2017 CSR that's just an amazing track car, just, just blisteringly fast. Uh, and so I thought we'd use that as an example, all the things we can do and do do for 550 cars. So uh, fingers crossed, we tried this technology thing before, and it worked once and failed two times in a row. So fingers crossed and yay, it worked. Okay, now as we go through this uh, this presentation, then I'm gonna go down and kind of list all the things that we do that's part of each section. So first of all, here, here's the different packages. Now with our program, we've got base packages, which are sort of levels of performance. And from there, uh, each, each car is specifically uh, contented for the individual customer based on their needs, uh, their budget, you know, a lot of different things you know, we talk, talk through. But we start with, with a basic level of performance and then we kind of work from there. And the, you know, the base one is sport touring, which is, you know, just what it says. I mean, it takes a, it takes a Mustang and makes it a much cooler, more fun uh, uh, for, for touring or driving every day uh, without being, you know, uh, getting too aggressive. And even a sports, one of our sports touring packages is totally comfortable on track. So just because it's a, it's a touring car doesn't necessarily mean you can't take it on track. And then we get the next level up is the GT4, which is a street performance car that you can, it, you can take on track. Uh, that's the best way to put it. It's, just, it's a level up from the sport touring. Uh, everything's a little more aggressive, more content, uh, more fun, more handling, more grip, more performance. And then the next level up from that is our the, the GT4 CS or Club Sport. Now this is this is like uh, some really serious uh, track performance, uh, and it, it's also it's kind of like the GT4 is a street car you take on track, and the Club Sport is a track car you can drive on the street. That's the best way to look at it. And all of this is it's a matter of content. You know, just you know everything gets a little bit better, uh, and then the the, the real the real killer. Uh, track car, the GT4 CSR, the Club Sport R. And uh, we're gonna go through, uh, we're gonna go through uh, Maryland uh, and just, just kind of show you how much stuff goes in there. And then of course we do do some uh, supercharged cars. Uh, and I, I only use, on a Mustang, I only use centrifugal superchargers. And on the 550s, that's all air to air on the intercooler. Uh, they, the air to air is, is more like a turbo would do, like a race turbo. A race car with turbos is air to air intercooler, and uh, you know I only use centrifugal because it builds the power uh, more more in a linear uh, fashion. Where with the positive displacement like an Eaton or a Roush or a Whipple, you've got instantaneous boost, instantaneous torque, which coming off a corner and all kind of suddenly becomes you have to use your right foot to manage the torque so you don't. Uh, light up the rear tires and, and lose grip and, and lose time. But with, with the, centri the centrifugal, like a, a Vortec or a, a, a uh, uh, how was the other one? Anyway, uh, then uh, what happens is the, 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 uh, the boost is more linear, which means the faster you go, the faster you go. So it's, it's, it, it, it suits a Mustang much better because you don't get that instant torque off the corner and just keep putting your foot down and keep going faster and faster. So, uh, Pro Charger, that's the other one. Uh, the Vortec or the Pro Charger are the two that are uh, centrifugal. And then, of course, we use the air to air intercooler. Okay, so this is Meet Maryland. Uh, and Maryland is kind of like it was kind of an interesting car. Uh, we, uh, we name all our cars, and most of our customers name their cars. And Maryland was a pretty, pretty extensive project, and there's a lot of content to it. And when you have a lot of content, you're relying on a lot of different suppliers. And the one thing in the aftermarket about suppliers is they will let you down. <clears throat> That's a proven fact. <clears throat> so through a number of delays, uh, you know, we finally got Maryland put together. But, but uh, 
and it was it's kind of a really cool car it was that uh, three coat a tricolor white uh it's, you know, it's, it's pretty gorgeous so the reason it was named maryland because it was a, a, a drop dead gorgeous platinum blonde that everybody wanted to get their hands on but nobody could catch so that's how the name maryland came to be so let's take a look at what is maryland yeah, there's maryland right there and you can see that it just looks pretty potent uh i mean it looks totally planted which it always is. I mean, the car is just amazing to drive. And you can see a lot of, well, I'll, I'll point out some things that we'll talk about more. We've got, the, we've got the side splitters, we've got the splitter, we've got the tow hook, we've got the oil cooler, we've got the canards, we've got the bennet hood and the arrow lashes and the wings. We can see uh, quite a bit of the outside things. And the front fenders are wider. They've got the GT350 front fenders. Okay, engine performance. Okay, here's what we did to the engine, and it, it made some de pretty decent power. We used the uh, Comp Stage 2 cams. Uh, if I did it again, I think I'd go to the Stage 3 cams. And this is the, the Stage 3 cams for the uh, using the existing uh, valve springs. Uh, we put in the uh, Ford Racing steel billet oil pump. Anytime you have a front cover off of a modular motor, you want to put in the, the billet oil pump. And we use this as a 17, we use a GT350 intake manifold, GT350 throttle body. Uh, and of course, it got one of my uh, uh, baffled road race oil pans, which uh, keeps the oil from sloshing around. It's kind of like the gas was sloshing around in Alessandro's gas tank. Well, the, uh, the oil pans that we use are baffled so that the oil uh, won't slosh as much and you always have oil pressure. And of course, we have a cold air kit and then uh, engine oil separators. Uh, to keep the, uh, in fact, that's, that's oil separator right there, keep oil from getting in the intake manifold. Uh, and there, any, any uh, Coyote uh, type engine really needs a uh, oil separator and you really only need them on the, on the passenger side. Uh, it seems to be the worst side. And then it was uh, tuned on the, on the dyno. And of course it had pedal max and pedal max is, <laughs> The, the coolest little piece of kit you, you can put in any car, uh, Mustang, truck, van, SUV. Uh, Pedal Max is just, it's a little box and it goes, you, you unplug your, your, you know, the gas pedal is uh, uh, drive by wire. It's, it's electronic. So you unplug the, uh, the gas pedal from the, the loom and you put the Pedal Max in between uh, the loom and the gas pedal and, 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 and simplest terms it turbocharges your right foot okay it actually speeds up the signal from the gas pedal to the throttle body and and i'm sure that if, if you're really paying attention that you know driving uh, one of these cars that, that you know the pickup can be a little sluggish between you know the time you hit the gas and the time the car starts to go well you know the pedal max just fixes all that and they come with a little dial <clears throat> you can dial, it goes from zero to 100. And you can kind of pick just how quickly you want the uh, uh, the accelerator to be. I typically, uh, you know, driving around town, I'll, I'll keep it about 60%. Gives me a good punch uh, in the, on track, it would go up to like, you know, 80 or 90%. And But around town, if it's raining or snowing or in parking lots, I'll turn it down to zero. And the reason I turn it down to zero in parking lots, because if you hit the gas, I mean, the, the response, of the throttle is so quick, the car will actually jump. So that's kind of what, what happens underneath the hood. And then of course, jacking rails. Uh, jacking rails are kind of essential for get jacking the car up. And for the 550s, we've talked about this before, we have a really unique jacking rail. Uh, and that the, the body itself that these bolt to have, are at a, like a five degree angle. So what we do, instead of using tubing, it would put the, the uh, the bottom of the rail at a five degree angle. We actually use these uh, both at a flat steel, you know, they're, they're laser cut and then formed and welded together so that the, uh, they mount flush on the body, but they're totally uh, perpendicular to the ground. So you got a flat surface to jack on. Okay, now we get into our advanced suspension system. Uh, and for this we put on, because it was a, a track car, uh, the JRZ RS Pros which are a double adjustable mono tube uh, with remote canister. And the, uh, the RS Pros, uh, it's, it's, it's a fabulous shock package for the 550s. Uh, it's, even though it's the RS series, which is sort of a club shock, 
I mean, it is just a smidgen short of a ray shock, you know, which makes it really, really a good shock to put in. And because it's monotube, we can see here we mounted it upside down, which so the uh, this is the you know the the, the line going to the uh, the uh, remote uh, canister, uh, so it doesn't have to bounce up and down. But uh, and these GFZ pros are just an amazing shock. And of course, we uh, I picked the specific spring rate for in each individual car, each individual application. Uh, I'll pick the spring rate for. So, uh, so it gets custom springs, and of course, we include a spanner with that. And all the shocks that that coilovers that come from me, as you, as you probably know, uh, are pre-adjusted, they're assembled, fully assembled, and pre-adjusted with the starting adjustment, and just a little bit of a tuning, you know, one-on-one tuning guide, and then the instructions that have any questions to call into me, and I'll tell you, give you some direction on, on tuning cars, on tuning the shocks. Uh, and then in the back, we uh, we do the we talked about this before. We do the IRS subframe support, where we lock the IRS subframe down uh, so that it doesn't it doesn't uh, move all over the place. And, and this car started as a performance performance pack one, uh, which gives us a lot of extra stuff like uh, the uh, torsion and 373 gears and better suspension pieces. And then for the exhaust, I hope we have a picture of exhaust. Yeah, for, okay, for the exhaust. Uh, is Bassani long tube stainless steel headers, uh, X pipe with high flow cats, and uh, and uh, uh, I'm reading my notes. High flow cats, the because it's going to be a track car, we, we only deliver cars with catalytic converters, period. Uh, absolutely no, no exceptions. But because this was going to be a track car, pretty much a dedicated track car, then we had the uh, replacements uh, for the uh, for the catalytic converters in the trunk, so that when he, at the track he could switch it out. But the catalytic converters on track will get really, really hot. And uh, in some instances, if you go off off track and it's summertime and dry grass, you light it on fire. They get so hot. And and then we get the the, the three inch stainless exhaust, and you can see these, these lovely little tips that come out the back. So moving up from the exhaust, uh, huh. What's on here doesn't match what's on my, uh... oh, yes, it does. I'm in the wrong spot. Gosh, I haven't had enough coffee yet. I apologize for that. Uh, drive line. Talking about the drive line, this gets a uh, shifter. The, the transmissions that, that come with the, the cars are not that great, but the shifters are even worse. So one of the first things we do is we throw away the factory shifter and put a shifter on that mounts completely 100% on the transmission so it doesn't move around. So it, uh, it, you get much better shifting. And we thought this car, a white knob, would be just the thing. It looked really awesome in there. And then the other, other thing in the, in the, in the drive line, we put aluminum drive shaft. Uh, didn't need to do anything differential because it came with a torsion and 373 gears. And then we also added a transmission cooling scoop. Uh, we didn't, you know, for, for track day cars, only do like 20 minute sessions. Don't really see the need to do a transmission cooler. Uh, a race, a full-on race car for sure. We do a transmission cooler, but for you know, 20 minute sessions, uh, I mean, you can get by with, with just a, uh, uh, a transmission cooling scoop. And speaking of cooling, uh, in the cooling department, we get, have our, add our triple pass radiator, which is high capacity triple pass. We've talked about this before. If that radiator, we're really, we're starting to sell a lot of those radiators. I think the word's getting out just how darn good these radiators are. And they're just a complete easy, uh, always swap, they just drop right in. We have an SN95, 197s, and 550s, and it just makes a huge difference in cooling capacity. Uh, even on, on the 550 cars, it uh, helps bring the oil, oil temperature down. I know a lot of people are concerned about that. And we had one customer with a GT350 at Road America that took like uh, almost 30 degrees of water temperature out at Road America with this radiator. So that, that's you know, kind of like that, that really the first important step. But seeing this car was going down to Phoenix, then we put uh, an engine oil cooler in there and a pretty good size oil cooler. But even so, it's thermostatically controlled, which means the oil cooler doesn't come on until it's over, oil temperature's over 180 degrees. And if it gets under 180 degrees, then uh, it, it, the thermostat shuts it off. So the oil is always at least 180 degrees. And then the differential, the same thing. We use a, a thermostat controlled differential cooler uh, we wired into the, you know, we hot wired into the car, so the driver doesn't have to worry about turning on a switch. 
and a long, long time ago when we started doing oil coolers, or diff coolers on the uh, Cobras, and we had a little switch mounted up in, in the console. And what we found is a lot of times the guys get all, all kind of jacked up, ready to go on track, and they forget to turn it on, and they burn up their diff. So to avoid that, we just go to a thermostatically controlled system. And again, about 180 degrees, the, uh, the pump and the fan click on. And we always use a, a fan on the, on the uh, uh, cooler itself. But you, you can't, in the back of the car, you just can't rely on airflow uh, to get to it and do its job. So depending on the, the location and, the, and where it is, it's either a pusher fan or a puller fan. But we always have a, a fan on the cooler and it's, it's wired with the, the pump. So pump comes on, fan comes on. And the cool thing about having wired into the system is that even when you pull into the pits, if the diff is still hot and you turn the car off, the diff pump is going to keep running until it gets cooled down. Where if you had it wired into, you know, the key, you turn the key off and all of a sudden all that heat sink and the diff is just going to stay hot. So, and so what's next? Ah, there's a shot of the, uh, the radiator and you can just see how thick that is. And believe it or not, as thick as that is, and it's a triple pass. Remember, it comes in one side, goes across, makes a U-turn, comes back across, makes a U-turn, goes back again. So it's highly efficient. And then the, uh, the fins that, that we use in these are uh, a smaller, so we actually get like 17, 18% more surface area than other three core radiators, which means more cooling. So, uh, I mean, it's it, 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 like I say, they're getting to be really popular. We're starting to sell quite a few of them. I think the word's getting out that they, it's, it's, a, it's a really good thing to have. Okay, brakes. This is the front brakes and front brake cooling. Uh, I, I can tell you that we've tried a number to get this, this hose in for a 550 car to the brakes is a real challenge. Uh, we've on different cars. We try a number of different ways. Haven't, haven't come up with the ultimate uh, but you just have to get creative to get that that hose, you know, kind of uh, snaked all the way back to get it up to the brakes. But brake cooling is super important for a track car. And we've talked about this before. I mean, the, the brakes get hot, plain and simple. If they get hot and you get natty get even cool, because brake ducts improve the pad life and they improve rotor life. And they also uh, improve safety because the, the brakes aren't going to get overheated and fail. Now, here's the Gonzo brakes that we put on Maryland. Now, you say, oh, man, it looks pretty big. Well, just to give you an idea just how big that is, that is a 15-inch rotor. Okay, the rotor is 15-inch by 1.4. Uh, most, most big brake kits are like a 14-inch rotor by 1.25. Well, this is 15-inch by 1.4. So, it's, it's a, it's a full-on race-type uh, rotor package. And if that... Uh, if the disc is 15 inches, just look how big that caliper is. I mean, the caliper is massive. Uh, and the, you know, the, the brake pad is, is bigger than the palm of your hand. In fact, the, the, uh, the caliper itself is bigger than the license plate. That kind of gives you an idea. So that's what we do up in the front. And of course, remember we talked about the thin little lines in the road. We only use slotted rotors, no holes. Holes will crack. Uh, they always have to point forward to get the best, uh, best operation. And then we can see, oh, in the back, we use the, uh, our standard uh, 6R, which is our, uh, the extreme 6R, which we've used for years on the 197 cars. Uh, but we use a full 14-inch, 15-inch uh, rotor on the back uh, uh, with, with a 15 by 1.25, uh, six-piston R calipers on the back. So when you talk about braking capability, man, this thing, you can haul this thing down from really high speed in no, no time at all. I mean, it just, it just stops. And, of course, we use stainless steel lines and then uh, as, as well as high temperature fluid. And the customer wanted uh, black calipers. So we got, had a custom color of black uh, with the red candy brown and the white, white bear claw. Okay, interior. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the brake, the wheels. Uh, these are Forge line wheels. And, again, he wanted them black, so we got a uh, custom color of, of black powder coat. Is the uh, VX1 uh, monoblock wheels, uh, great wheel, open lugs, so it's easier to uh, get the lugs on and off. Uh, and then also, uh, it's, a, it's a 19 by 10 and a half front and 19 by 11 and a half rear. Okay, and then for tires, we put a 305 3019 on the front and a 325 3019 on the back. 
and my Pirelli Trofeo R's. So it had like super sticky tires, super big, super sticky tires. And man, they, they grip. I mean, like I say, driving this car, I got to drive a little bit at the uh, the Corvette Museum track. And I was just blown away just how, how well this thing drove and how hard it gripped the road. So then moving on to safety, uh, we came with the Recaros. So we added the, the short, this is a four point single clip uh, harness belt. Uh, and then we also, let's see, put in the roll bar. And so for a number of things, it, it's a safety measure. Plus we can mat, mat, uh, mount the, uh, the harnesses to it. Plus the rear seat delete to give that kind of like custom look. It looks really, really tidy inside with the, with the roll bar and the rear seat delete. And then we get the air up on the hood. Uh, this is a different kind of, of vented hood. Uh, the one that, uh, like, runs behind me, the uh, the uh, uh, the Tiger hood was not available at this time. So this actually has three sets of vents on either side and then in the middle. So there's plenty of cooling in the hood. And also this kind of shows the arrow, latch, arrow catches that we put on. Anytime that you put on a, a lightweight hood, you always, always, always have to put hood pins on of some kind. Now, over the years, we've evolved to using this, these arrow catch, and you can see uh, how slick they are. I mean, they mat, they're, they're perfectly flush on the hood, so they don't have any any issues with, uh, you know, obstructing the airflow, and they look really cool. Now, most cars, we mount them, uh, you know, north and south, but just due to the, the nature of the curvature of the hood, uh, it worked better to, to mount east and west, and they, they mounted really good there, and, and it looks great. So, I mean, that's what we use uh, as the arrow catch. We use it pretty much exclusively in all our carbon hoods. Okay, now, here's a good shot of the the side arrow, the, this, the side splitters. And, and what we've, we've talked before, and we go over that in, in detail in the arrow section of the uh, the academy. In fact, uh, speaking of arrow in the academy, the uh, the illustration that I think was in the email uh, showing it's, it's actually I think it was a GT 500. Uh, that is actually one of the illustrations that are in the in the arrow section of the uh, of uh, the academy. <coughs> I spent two weeks talking about arrow and how it works in a car and how to improve a car through arrow. And this kind of gives you a really good shot of this is the side splitter. And that keeps the air from rolling under the car. Uh, air, as you, as you go down the road, air wants to roll under the car because it's curved here. And by having a side splitter, it, it keeps it from rolling under, which helps uh, keep the back of the car under negative and keep the car down and flat. Also shows you the front splitter that we put on, uh, carbon splitter. And then because we're going from max downforce on this front and back, uh, we added some, some really small, not huge, but just some small uh, canards just add just a little more front downforce along the splitter of the canards and the hood uh, really pull the front of the car down and the, the side splitters, the wing and the uh, diffuser, which we'll see, hold the back of the car down. And there you can see, there's a good view of the, of the splitter. And uh, we decided to put this little red line on there. It just looks, it made it stand out and just really good. And you can see the curvature on the uh, canard. And here's another picture of it. And they're not giant ones. They're they're just they're pretty small. Uh, it's just you know every little bit helps. And you can see here, they're just not huge, but they're they don't come out any further than the edge of the fenders, which is how I wanted it. I didn't want anything sticking out because that disrupts the airflow. It adds a little bit of downforce without disrupting the airflow. That's pretty cool. I like that shot. It also shows you just how big the tires are. Okay, and then here's a shot of the, uh, we've got the GT350 type fenders, and we, we, we knocked this out. So this actually is a vent, the front fender vent to help reduce uh, pressure that builds up under the fenders. You know, another arrow thing actually you know, has some aesthetic value too. This helps e evacuate uh, uh, pressure that builds up within the, in the fenders themselves. <laughs> and then the rear wing, we use the, uh, the 3D type wing which has a raised section. And the purpose of that raised section is, particularly for a sedan, as the air comes over the back of the car, uh, having this raised section actually kind of in, uh, induces the air to come under the wing more so than if it were flat all the way across. Anytime we use a lower wing, uh, 
I like to use the 3D type to help pull air underneath it. Uh, in, in, in racing, uh, we'd use a tall single plane wing uh, because we can get it up in the, in the airstream. But putting a great big tall wing on a street car, slash track car, really, and it, it's kind of like a, it, we didn't want that look at me thing, uh, you know, driving down the street. So the cops say, hey, I think I'm going to arrest that guy. Uh, so we, we, we put the, the 3D and mounted it low. It looked, looked, as you can see, it looked pretty cool. And here's a diffuser we put underneath it. So we're using the side splitters, the diffuser, and the rear wing all to create downforce at the back of the car. And that is the back, the, the, the closest anybody will get to this car. Uh, if you're following it, you won't follow it for long because it's going to be gone. I mean, the car is really, 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 really quick. And it's just absolute, absolute dream to drive. Uh, one of the nicest driving cars I've, I've done. Uh, even even drives nicer than uh, Ruby, my 197 car.